Hello everyone, my name is Kyle Clarkson. I'm a graduate student at the University of British Columbia, and today I'll be discussing our research on competitive strategies for exploring a convex polygon. So in our problem, a mobile agent initially at S, external to a convex polygon Q, has to see all edges of the polygon. The question is, what is the shortest path to do so? So for example, in this instance of the problem, perhaps this is the shortest path, such that all edges are seen from some point on this path. But interesting question is, what should this agent do when the polygon is not known in advance? Okay, um, so is it possible in this in, uh, this case that the agent can somehow find the optimal path? Okay, so what strategy should it employ to do so? Uh, perhaps such a strategy is move to the nearest corner. Okay, uh, so in blue, this is the path resulting in the strategy, but of course, it's much longer than the optimal path in red. Now, in general. That's too much to ask for uh, the agent in such a scenario to find the optimal path. But it's possible for it to find a path that's close to it, okay? So our goal is to come up with a strategy for this agent to employ, um, such that for any instance of this problem, it can uh, it'll, it will generate a path whose length is at most a constant times the length of the optimal path, okay? so. Um, that is our goal, and as an outline of this presentation, to achieve this goal, we first look at a subproblem, the convex chain problem. Uh, you know, this can be viewed as the agent is restricted to only traversing in one direction around the polygon. We show uh, a two-pi competitive strategy for this problem. We then show how this strategy to search one side can essentially be used to search both sides incrementally to give a 9C competitive strategy to see all edges of the polygon, where C is the competitive factor coming from the strategy for the convex chain problem. Uh, we'll improve upon this result by determining a better strategy for the convex chain problem, one with a pi over two competitive strategy. Now with the second item, this implies a nine pi over two uh, competitive strategy for seeing all edges of the polygon, which is an improvement on recent work by Kukitsky and others who gave a about 90 competitive strategy. Um, now key to this two-sided search strategy is to determine a lower bound on the length of the optimal path and we show how an agent can do that as well. Okay, so the convex chain problem. Um, we take a chain, so a continuous subsequence of the edges of a convex polygon and it is this chain that the agent must see. Uh, but in addition to this, the agent knows which direction around the polygon it needs to reverse, okay? So perhaps this is the original instance of the problem. Um, these edges that remain are what the agent is tasked to see, and the agent knows to go in the counterclockwise direction. And for this instance, perhaps this is the shortest path that sees the chain of edges. But again, the agent only knows the edges that it uh, sees from S. So what strategy should it do to see the remaining chain? So any competitive strategy for this problem essentially has to handle how to look around several corners. And there's two extremes. Uh, one where the optimal path to look around these corners kind of hugs the boundary of the chain. Another where the optimal path leaves the boundary. So we have to handle both of those. Uh, we saw how straight lines didn't really work with this. So what about kind of a, a strategy that produces curved paths, okay? Um, and it was Icking and others in the early 90s that considered such a case for a single corner, and we extend their results to multiple corners for this chain, okay? So corner radius strategy, um, let's see one be the first corner the agent has to look around, and what it will do, it will uh, inscribe a circle centered on this corner, um, whose radius is the distance the agent is away from the corner. Uh, it will then follow the arc from the circle until that corner is looked around, revealing a new edge and a new corner. Uh, it will then construct a new circle centered on uh, this next corner, and it will just repeat this process till all edges are seen. Okay. Some things to note. Um, as the polygon in which the chain is originating from is the only obstacle in the plane, that the paths produced by the corner radius strategy are feasible. Okay. Um, second. Whenever S isn't at the endpoint of the chain, we can reduce to an instance where it is. And how we do this? From S, we take all the edges that were initially seen, we remove them and add a single edge from S to the first corner. And we'll assume that throughout uh, this talk. Now, the third thing is, well, what's the optimal path really doing? Well, it's the shortest path that moves in the direction it is told to move uh, to reach the extension of the last edge quickest, okay? Um, so 
you know, that is essentially the shortest path to see the last edge. And then by convexity, we know all the edges uh, in between will be seen as well. So to think about the length of the optimal path, we will consider when the optimal path hugs the boundary and then when it jumps off the boundary. Okay, and we'll partition the optimal path using this scheme here, using these two uh, symbols to denote these lengths. Okay, all right. So in general, suppose the chain has n edges, and let phi i be the angle between consecutive edges. Okay, uh, the angle between edge i and the extension of the next edge, e i plus one. Okay. Um, so just using our partitioning scheme of the optimal path, we can write its length as such where the latter term comes from further partitioning this length into a collection of base lengths of right triangles, okay? So for instance, E4, uh, that's the hypotenuse. The length of that, uh, the base of this triangle is the length E4 multiplied by the sine of the sum of these angles, okay? Now one thing to note, because the agent or the optimal path that is leaves the boundary at this point, we know that the sum of all these angles is at most pi over two. Okay, so what is the length of the uh, corner radius strategy? Well, it's a sum of arc lengths AI, where uh, AI is equal to the angle in which the agent is going to rotate by, so phi I, times its radius, and that radius is the sum of edge lengths from the first edge to the ith edge. So just by definition, this is what the length of the corner radius strategy is. Now we rearrange these terms such that we have uh, each edge length multiplied by the angles that contribute to it. And then to match our partition scheme of the optimal, we just split this into the first U edges and then the remaining edges as such. Two observations we now make. Uh, since the chain comes from a convex polygon, we know that the sum of these angles is at most 2 pi. And for any angle between 0 and pi over 2, we know that that angle is at most pi over 2 times the sine of that angle. Now, using these observations and uh, to derive an upper bound on the length of the competitive strategy, we get this term here in the middle. Um, but of course, this middle term, uh, what's on the right-hand side, is just the length of the optimal path. Therefore, the corner radius strategy, its length is at most two pi, the optimal path. Okay, so you know, uh, how do we extend this to cover uh, seeing all edges of the polygon? Well, essentially, we use the corner radius strategy to search um, one side for a little bit. If we're not done, come back to S, search the other side for a bit more, and then repeat the strategy till all edges are seen, okay? Um, in particular, you know, for the strategy, we have to decide how do we increase these distances uh, such that the strategy will be competitive, okay? Um, now, this problem is very similar to the classical cow pass problem where, you know, there's this cow located on the origin. It's looking for a gate uh, distance d away, but it neither knows what that distance is or in which direction. Okay, but if it knows the lower bound lambda on this distance, it can follow this strategy. Oh, we'll search one direction, step lambda, come back to the origin, uh, double, so two lambda in the other direction, return, double again, and repeat this until the gate is found. And you can show that using this strategy, you're guaranteed to traverse at most distance nine times the true distance d, uh, the gate is away. Okay, um, so for, our problem, uh, you know, one observation is, well, the nature of the optimal path is it will first have to go one direction, or possibly not, um, but to see one edge, okay? And then from seeing that edge, it will then turn around and traverse in the other direction to complete inspection. So for example, we have these two instances, one where the optimal path does this turn, the other one where it does not, okay? Our path is, or our problem is kind of like a two-gated cow pass problem where these gates correspond to where the agent first turns and where the uh, optimal path ends as well, okay? Uh, so the agent following the optimal path first turns one gate and then where that path ends is the second gate. Um, the thing though is, in our case, the agent doesn't know it's reached any of the gates until the last gate is reached. And when the last gate is reached, that corresponds to all edges being seen, okay? So let the two-sided corner radius strategy be uh, the strategy where we use corner radius to uh, explore both sides and we increase the distance we traverse um, in each iteration by doubling it. And again, we're going to assume here that we know a lower bound uh, and that's going to be our initial step size, a lower bound on the true distance of the op or length of the optimal path. Okay, so um, now let G be this point in the plane where the, uh, the strategy ends. So once all edges are seen. Now, the path from S to G 
can be viewed as a convex chain problem. So the edges seen uh, from S, if we walk straight to the point G, okay, um, in the direction last traversed by the agent, that those edges will correspond to an instance of the uh, convex chain problem. So let A prime and O prime denote the uh, strategy or the path resulting from the corner radius strategy and the optimal path for that problem respectively. And finally, let A just be the path resulting from the two-sided corner radius stretch. Okay, so from the CalPaths analysis, we have that this length of the two-sided search strategy is at most nine times a length of A prime, okay? From the corner radius strategy, we know that the length of A prime is at most two pi O prime. And then from our observation, because here we're only seeing one gate as opposed to the optimal path that has to see both of these gates, we know that O prime is at most the length of the optimal path to see all edges of the polygon. And thus, just by chaining together these inequalities, we have that the corner radius strategy is 18 pi, or the two-sided corner radius strategy is 18 pi compared. However, can we do better? And to do better, well, we could have a better uh, strategy for the convex chain problem, and then just plug that into the two-sided search problem, okay? Now to do that, we look at the angle hall of a convex polygon. So the angle hall is the set of points such that at that point, if you cast two rays to the endpoints of the boundary you see from that point, the angle between those rays is 90 degrees, okay? So for this convex polygon, here is the angle hall, all these points view the polygon at 90 degrees. Uh, and it was Hoffman and others in the late 90s that showed that the length of the angle hall is at most pi over two the length of the boundary of the polygon. So for the angle hall strategy for the convex chain problem, let that just be the strategy where the agent is always viewing the chain at a 90 degree angle, okay? By a similar analysis, we can show that it is pi over two competitive uh, for the corner or the convex chain problem, okay? And thus, the uh, angle hall strategy is then pi over two competitive, okay? Um, now, just to see how this works in uh, an example, um, the first edge we see is just E1. So the agent follows an arc whose diameter is spanned by the endpoints of edge E1. Uh, now, once the corner is looked around, it sees edges E1 and E2. So the diameter of the circle that generates the next arc is spanned by the endpoints of edges E2 and E3. Um, and then same thing for uh, arc A3 because edges one, two, and three are being seen. But for the next arc, uh, A4, now E1 will no longer be seen. So the diameter that generates the next arc length is coming from the uh, line spanned by the edges E2 and E3, okay? Um, and we just repeat this until all edges are seen. Now when we compare this to, in red, the optimal path, we see that the angle hall strategy produces a path that's much closer to the optimal path's length than what we see in green, which is the corner radius strategy. So just plugging in the angle hall strategy for the convex chain problem, uh, we'll then have the, um, by a similar analysis, that the resulting competitive factor for this two-sided angle hall strategy is nine pi over two, which is about 14.4, okay? Um, but how do we determine a lower bound on the length of the optimal path to see all edges of the polygon? So from S, the agent need, uh, sees some endpoints or some chain, and let's call A and B the endpoints of this chain. Now for any inspection path, this agent has, or any inspection path has to look around both corners uh, or both points A and B. Okay, so to get a lower bound, we ask, well, what is the shortest possible way the agent can move from S to do so? Okay, so, um, you know, what is, how do we come up with this? Well, essentially, we're going to sandwich two parallel lines between A and B, and we're going to minimize over all possible distances resulting, uh, that resulting from these sandwiches, parallel lines that go through S. So, for instance, here's one, um, the ray goes through A, and we have this distance D1, a second is D2, and the third distance is D3. So these are lower bounds on what the agent has to traverse to look around both directions, uh, both corners A and B. Um, now through a little bit of analysis, it's sufficient just to shoot rays through A and B, okay? Um, and then we take the minimum of the two and we can show that half of this length is a sufficient lower bound on the length of the optimal path, and thus can be used as the lower bound um, on our two-sided search strategy. 
with that, I'd like to thank you for listening and we're happy to take any questions if you have any. Thank you.